Do you buy vinyl? Hey, I'm Mike Shinoda. I'm at Amoeba Records, and this is What's in My Bag. So you can call first thing in here was one of my favorite albums of all time, Fear of a Black Planet, which I don't know if you can see the cool re-release. The very first time I listened to it, I got it because I had seen 911 as a joke on Yo! MTV Raps. But when I listened to the album, I kept coming back to Burn Hollywood Burn because it featured Chuck alongside Ice Cube and Big Daddy Kane, which is like such a weird combination in a sense, but it was really good. For all the years we looked like clowns, the joke is over, smell the smoke from all around. It's probably one of the most influential albums ever for me personally, which is weird because I don't do what they do, but they were so much more aggressive and thoughtful and it was like such a well-rounded experience between Chuck's hardcore delivery and Flav's like joking around and then the Bomb Squad production. Just such a perfect record to me. The next thing I found was this York record, Post. I think it was probably like the most artistic album I had ever heard up until that point. Like somebody who just was approaching an album more like a, a gallery artist than a singer. And to me that was, I was in art school or getting ready to go to art school at the time. And it just broadened my horizons, you know, in the sense of like what you can do in the midst of something that is more about commerce, you can inject quite a bit of art into it. and still retain like your you know integrity and, and still make an album that people want to listen to. This Far Side, Bizarre Ride to the Far Side record was my favorite, favorite album when it came out for like probably a whole year. I listened to it nonstop. Your mama got a glass eye with the fish in it. Your mama got a glass eye with the fish in it. Your mama got a glass eye with the fish in it. Your mama, your mama, your mama. They were LA artists, just had such unique deliveries and, and the beats were so incredible. They were only together for a short time. They recorded one other album that people really heard and then kind of fell off the face of the planet and broke up. So it was like almost like magic that this one album was able to happen and it was so, so good. To me, it, it kind of embodied like graffiti culture at the time. Like it's it's there, like you can kind of see it and whatever, but we were all wearing like massive pants and like double, triple XL shirts and like tagging on stuff and drawing like those exaggerated graffiti style characters and listening to Far Side for uh, me and my friends. This is like the biggest record. So excited to find this Aphex Twin, Richard D. James album. You can hear the influence of his stuff, maybe not just this album, but his stuff in general, on a lot of our early material when we were doing all the stuttering stuff. Even if you listen to In The End, like the little, there's like little bits of stuttering that's a digital manipulation to the vocals. In spite of the way you were mocking me, acting like I was part of your property. And you hear it now, it's still being done. Like you still hear Nicki Minaj doing it. Drinks up. It's a celebration every time we link up. And it really all came from, from Aphex Twin. He would make like an electronic track and on its own it might not be the most interesting or exciting thing, but then he just ran it through a blender of digital chopping and he just turned it into something completely different in the computer. And he was using the computer as an instrument in a way that I had never heard. You know, chopping things up into like one sixty-fourth 
slices and then rearranging them and affecting them. And I don't even know, like to this day, I've tried to figure out some of the things that he's done and I can't like recreate them. Um, refused, I don't think there would be a Linkin Park without Refused. Like the sound of the guitars and the drums, like the live band sound of this album was one of the things that when we were recording and when we were mixing, I remembered like a being hybrid theory to this album and being like it needs to like have as much energy as this album does. Yeah, this is a really, really special record. One thing that I was super excited to find, and it's not just one record, it's a whole bunch of records. But when we were getting started as a band, our DJ, Joe, and I used to go down to Melrose and find all these um, independent records that were made by DJs, usually here in New York, but sometimes other places, uh, Bay Area, Chicago. DJ Rectangle, DJ Swamp, Qbert, and I found a bunch of them downstairs. The DJ Rectangle ones were cool to me because they had like, break beats and um, like stabby scratches. They just have a stab and then be space and another stab and a space. And that's what you'd use as like a battle DJ, what Joe used to do. Like you'd use those and you'd fast forward to the next one, scratch that one, and fast forward to the next one, scratch that one. Not bad for a beginner. Yeah! What do you want with me? DJs were getting really like creative with it to the extent that on this DJ Swamp record, this one, what he did was he took all of these loops and you know the needle will go around the record one time and over the course of the vinyl they go closer and closer to the middle the little groove that the needle sitting in is going like this well they made this record without the grooves going towards the center they did one groove that goes around like this and they set the bpm of the breakbeat to fit one cycle was the loop so it, it's called never ending breakbeats because you'd set the needle on it and it would just ride a groove in a circle forever. And then you'd go to the next one, it would just ride in a circle forever. It's like a very, like almost like scientific way to do it. It was almost like inconsequential what the beats were. It was just incredible that somebody had like thought of that and done it. And DJ Swamp was the guy. But what's interesting to me is that a sound on vinyl especially if you start to pitch it, it changes the sound so much in a way that you don't get if it's in the computer and you don't get if you're like using Serato with a digital file. Like it's been, you know, pressed onto vinyl and then once you manipulate that, you get a whole new sound. And you know, my early demos and stuff like that, whether it was my rap stuff or the stuff for Linkin Park, like that was a lot of what I used to do. Was that cool? Yeah, that was great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you talking with us today. Yeah, this was super fun. Running from my shadow. Running from